Starting soon, the Monday Market Highlights podcast will be exclusively available on Milford's new podcast channel called On Track with Milford. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes. You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 15th of May and I'm Nick from Milford. Looking at the key economic news from last week, starting in the US we had both headline and core CPI increasing 0.4% month on month for April, in line with market expectations. This brings the annual inflation rate to 4.9% year on year, slightly below consensus of 5%, and looking into the subcategories in more detail, food price inflation grew at a slower rate, energy costs continue to fall, and importantly, shelter costs, a large weight in the CPI basket, also slowed for the first time in two years, from 8.2% to 8.1%. We also had the producer price index out in the US, a data set that measures the change in selling prices received by domestic producers. Prices increased 0.2% month on month compared to expectations of 0.3% and following a 0.4% drop in March. Finally in the US, we had the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey out for April. The preliminary data showed a sharp fall to 57.7, down from 63.5 in March, and below expectations of 63. The preliminary consumer expectations number was also weak, falling to 53.4 from 60.5 in March, and below expectations of 59.8. The soft prints continuing to illustrate the consumer concerns about the direction of the US economy. In the UK, we had the March GDP numbers out, coming in slightly below expectations at 0.3% versus expectations of 0.4%. The Bank of England also had their interest rate decision last week, deciding to raise the bank rate by 25 basis points to 4.5% in line with consensus. The market continues to price in another full hike at the next meeting, and likely another one to follow. Moving across to China, the April headline inflation print came in below expectations at 0.1% compared to market expectations of 0.4%. Looking at the subcategories, both food and non-food prices continued to ease. Also in China, we saw credit growth slow materially in April, with new yuan loans coming in at $718 billion, about half of what the market was expecting. The weak credit growth and aggregate financing potentially pointed to soft underlying growth in the economy and the need for the People's Bank of China to continue easing. In Australia, we had the federal budget out on Tuesday. The package details included a four-year $14.5 billion policy to help households and small businesses with the increasing cost of living pressures. They are targeting reduced energy costs, healthcare reform, and sector-specific wage growth. The budget also included a large allocation to clean energy industries such as renewables, carbon capture and storage, and hydrogen, and also supported industries such as primary steel, cement, lime, and aluminium to decarbonise. Lastly, in Australia, we had the final retail sales numbers out for March, increasing 0.4% month on month, unrevised from the preliminary reading, and up from 0.2% in February. Turning to equity news, Allchem, an Australian listed lithium company with assets in Argentina, has announced plans with Levent to merge in an all stock merger of equals, forming a new company with a market cap of approximately 10.6 billion US dollars. There appear to be plenty of synergies between the two companies, and the stock closed up 15% on the day. We also had Silver Lake Resources send in a revised bid to buy the Leonora assets from St. Barbara. The total value was unchanged, but the split included more script that St. Barbara could hold on their balance sheet to provide liquidity. The new bid also addressed various concerns with regards to timing and conditionality. Silver Lake are currently waiting for a response from St. Barbara, which is expected in the coming week. CSR, a building products provider for residential and commercial construction, also reported the FY23 result, which was stronger than the market expected. The beat was primarily driven by the building product section, with aluminium and property in line with guidance. Looking forward, they did give weaker FY24 guidance on the aluminium segment, which would have been taken negatively by the market. Looking to the week ahead, on Tuesday we have the RBA minutes. The commentary around the previous decision to hike rates will be important for the market to watch. We also have the employment data out in the UK, with consensus estimates unchanged for the unemployment rate at 3.8%. On Wednesday, we have the US retail sales, with the market estimating 0.7% month-on-month compared to minus 0.6% for March. And finally, on Thursday, we have the Australian employment data out, with the market expecting employment change to increase by 25,000 people and for the unemployment rate to remain unchanged at 3.5%. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, this podcast is moving to Milford's new podcast channel, 
Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out.